Oh, howdy all, grab yourselves a beer, it is time for some Path of Exile discussion. Today we got the Necromancer Ascendancy Overhaul details. Now, side note, these match the leaks, so that means that the leaks for everything else are probably right as well. But um, I wasn't intending to go into the leaks in detail, I'll talk about the Necromancer specifically. Now, the first thing to note, this is a very thoroughgoing overhaul. Uh, this is not just tinkering around the edges of the Ascendancy, this is a totally new Ascendancy that reuses a couple parts of the old Necromancer. So this means that there's been a number of things that uh, players did care about that have been completely lost in the overhaul. Firstly, Convocation cooldown reduction is gone. There was a node that used to give 50% reduction to the cooldown of Convocation. Now Convocation, if you're not familiar with minion builds, it's a spell you can cast on a 4 second default cooldown. Uh, 3.2 seconds with a 20 quality gem and 3.08 seconds with a 23 quality gem and it calls all of your minions back to you and gives them all life regeneration for a short period. And fundamentally, although the life regeneration gives it a theme of recalling your minions from danger, it's more recalling your minions to protect you from danger or, as its main use actually is in practice, a hurry up and get over here, stop trying to meddle around with that stupid wall that you can't figure out how to path through, and come right here right now. Now, 4 second base cooldown on that spell, and as I said, 3.08 with a 23 quality one, uh, that's not the end of the world, but the game moves fast, and so basically you would, it was very powerful to be able to use it a lot. Uh, this is no longer an option. Other things that are completely lost, there was a node that made skeletons attacks unable to be evaded, that is gone. There was a node that allowed your zombies to uh, leave a massive cloud of shit on the ground when they died, uh, that is gone. And that was actually quite a powerful node and there was a lot of, uh, a lot of the changes to minions that have happened to the base minion gems uh, may have made that node extraordinarily strong if it had remained. But in any case, it's gone. If you want that effect, you're going to be forced to use the Siege Breaker Unique Belt, and you don't get as strong a version of it as you used to be able to get. So, those are gone, but what's still around? So first up, we have the Mistress of Sacrifice uh, cluster here. So this is nodes 1 and 2 on the tree. Now, these, provide, uh, these are reasonably similar to what they used to be. Uh, the old Miner node has been changed. So, of note here that Mistress of Sacrifice is an old node. Uh, it has been changed a little bit, but also of note the Miner node has been changed and has been buffed. That Miner node used to be 15% minion damage, 4% cast speed. It's been changed to 15% uh, minion damage and 10% skill effect duration. Now, this is a buff because skill effect duration is hard to earn. Uh, obviously, 4% cast speed was nice and it'll be missed, but 10% skill effect duration... For builds that care about it, that is a very difficult uh, stat to acquire via any other means. There's only a couple of places on the passive tree that you can pick up skill effect duration, and they're mostly very out of the way. So, the penalty to offering effects, uh, their, their effect on you has been decreased. Now, that used to be negative 50% effect, so 50% re reduced effect on you, it's now 25%. The universal skill effect duration on Mistress of Sacrifice has been improved from 20% to 30%, and minion duration of 30% has been added as well. Uh, it no longer grants conditional damage like it used to, and I still think though that overall this side of the, uh, this section of the Necromancer has been improved. The ability to cast your offerings and get more value out of them uh, is considerable because Offering skills provide powerful buffs to your minions, and some of these are really significant. Bone Offering provides block-based defense that now applies to you as well and makes you very tanky for a short period. Uh, Flesh Offering is basically minion Vile Haste, and it's something that you can use very frequently on yourself now. And Spirit Offering provides you energy shield, chaos damage, and resistances. And Spirit Offering doesn't help so much uh, the ability to share it from your minions to yourself and in fact I think that many builds that want to use spirit offering regularly will instead prefer to not um, not take mistress of sacrifice because it just doesn't benefit them very much but the other two uh, the other two offerings bone offering and flesh offering offer a lot when they're shared with you so that will be really really solid so to say that the net effect on the Mistress of Sacrifice side of things is a, a significant buff if you use Flesh Offering a lot, and you should be casting Flesh Offering a hell of a lot. 
there's also a bit of a niche use case for this uh, cluster as well now. Some skills and ones that I'm thinking of are Winter Orb, Blade Vortex and Caustic Arrow, but there are more, are very significantly scaled by skill effect duration. It's probably not worth it, but I'm sure someone will try to build, a, uh, to design a build that stacks skill effect duration and comes into the Necromancer solely because Mistress of Sacrifice offers so much skill effect duration. Uh, it can be great. In addition, Vile Haste is another skill that gains a lot from skill effect duration, although that increases its, uh, soul, its soul recovery time as well. Now, next up we have a totally new Corpse Eater tree, and this is Plaguebringer and Corpse Pact. So it's this section of the, uh, of the new Ascendancy, four, uh, 3, 4, 5, and 6, and the details are coming up on the screen now. So this is one of the more disappointing sections of the tree, in my opinion. Uh, there is a real tension between, on the one hand, uh, using skills that consume corpses. So they're, sa they're screaming at you, eat all of the delicious corpses, eat them all. And then there's other, there's other sections that say, of the tree that say, no, leave at least one of the delicious corpses near the enemies, please. I don't think I like this dynamic in theory. I do need to see it in practice. But basically speaking, I think that uh, Path of Exile is too fast moving a game for you to set up uh, combos where you go, okay, firstly I cast an offering skill to consume corpses, then I cast a uh, some sort of corpse generation effect, uh, whether that be Desecrate or Unearth or something like that, something that generates corpses, and then after I've generated corpses, then I start unloading my main attacks on the enemies. Uh, that is something you might consider doing on bosses, but generally speaking, we kill monsters too quickly for that to be a particularly relevant playstyle at the game's current speed. However, if future changes to the game slow it down considerably, then at that point, we may find uh, that these have more of a use. So Plaguebringer gives 10% more damage, which is somewhat uh, conditional. This is functional, but it's neither powerful nor exciting, and it can be hard to use as many corpse-consuming spells, uh, just consume all of them, not, not just one, so you might need to um, you might lose the more multiplier for a bit while you're, while you're then summoning a new corpse. And that's the same with Corpse Pact as well. Uh, again, really pushes this eat corpses, then desecrate corpses, then launch your real attacks uh, even further than Plaguebringer does. And I just don't see it fitting into the current state of the game. Uh, as a side note, it is a new source of indirect shock, and they seem to be getting more and more of these in the game. Uh, pay attention to these because they don't stack. It's a 20% increased damage taken by monsters, which is functionally a more multiplier if it's the only one of these mods that you've got. But it's something that if you're playing in a party, chances are someone else might have indirect shock sources as well, uh, and only one of them will count. So for instance, if you're playing in a party with someone that is using the new summon Skitterbots uh, mine reservation skill, then that will not stack. With, uh, the indirect shock from the Skitterbots will not stack with the indirect shock, uh, shock from Corpse Pact. So there's a whole lot of other things like that. Uh, potentially also uh, Vile Lightning Trap is another skill that people have used in the past a lot. It's not as strong as it used to be, but it's still solid, and it's something that provides indirect shock, which again, is not all that powerful and it doesn't stack. So, my general conclusion on the corpse eating side of the tree is, I don't think it's worth it at the moment. Uh, I'm very open to being proven wrong, but right now I'm going to say leave this section off your builds unless you've got a very specific reason to want to do them. Next up we have this fork. Now this vaguely mirrors the old Invoker, Fleshbinder, Bone Sculptor and Soul Weaver section of the Necromancer Ascendancy as, as it used to be, but it doesn't do so exactly. The old version rewarded specialising in one or two types of minions, and the new tree is more versatile but has a slightly lower power ceiling for some of those, uh, for some of the various minion types. Now, it would be, the changes that are made would be lower power overall compared to the old Necromancer, except for the fact that the baseline gems have been improved. So, for instance, a skeleton character will do more damage under the new Necromancer Ascendancy, even though the new Necromancer Ascendancy is providing less power to their skeletons than the old one did. And the reason for that is that the Summon Skeletons gem is getting so much better that it will more than make up for the amount that is that is lost in the tr in the power on the necromancer tree itself. 
So first up, we have the bland but very powerful node Mindless Aggression. Uh, it's a lot of stats that you care about. Minion movement speed, we want lots of that. Minion damage, we want lots of that. Minion attack speed, minion cast speed, we want lots of that. Uh, just a flat up good value node, something you're going to need to take. Uh, it's a boring node, but you can't complain because it's the sort of stat it's the stats that hold the build together and that when you take this, and I think most people will take this as their normal Labyrinth Ascendancy, uh, it's going to make your minions start to feel like they're really meaningful. So, yeah, not the most exciting, but very important node. Next up we have Bone Barrier. Now Bone Barrier is a uh, is apparently a steel skin variant that affects minions too. And that's been uh, information that's been given to us by Natalia from GGG on the Path of Exile subreddit. Now this may be good, but it's worth pointing out that it does come down to the numbers. This cannot be automated in any way because it's a skill that is granted to your character. It is not a skill gem. Now this node makes you very tanky overall. Even when you don't have this Bone Barrier skill active, or sorry, Bone Armor skill active, uh, you're getting potentially 10% physical damage reduction. That's two and a half uh, endurance charges. You're also getting a bunch of other things as well. So this also, of course, is two and a half endurance charges stacks with other sources of endurance charges. Physical damage reduction is a stat that is very, very powerful and very hard to get your hands on. More minion life can do funky things, uh, although unfortunately the zombie explosion section is gone, uh, but it's something that does matter as well, giving minions 20% more life. I think this will be a fairly popular choice of Ascendancy node to take. And also minion instability is of course still a thing. Minion instability is a keystone on the normal passive tree that causes minions to go butter boom when they go to 35% of their life or under and they deal 33% of their maximum life as fire damage to nearby enemies. Base explosion radius of, 12, uh, of 22 units is, I believe, about a quarter of the screen, so it's not a tiny explosion, but it's not a large one either. So this is something that um, if you will definitely, definitely want to take the Bone Barrier node if you're playing with minion instability, and there seem to be a lot of ways you can build around that in the new Necromancer. So, now let's talk about the perhaps most exciting, although most simple, of nodes on this tree, and that is Unnatural Strength, plus two to the level of all minion skill gems. Such a simple line, and so much potential power there. So, what does this do? Minion gems scale pretty aggressively with a skill gem level. Uh, basically, this is a 20 to 25% more multiplier to all your minion damage, to all minion hit points, and sometimes it will get you over a, pr a critical break point where a minion skill gem jumps up in power a lot. So for example, we don't know the break points for summon skeletons, but it's entirely possible that you might have level 25 summon skeletons without this node, 27 with it, and hitting, getting over 27 might be the point in which you get one more skeleton available. Uh, most importantly, this is going to make it very easy to hit the magic 31 breakpoint for Herald of Agony. If you're playing with Herald of Agony, uh, hitting level 31 is an incredibly, uh, gem level 31 is an incredible, incredible improvement to your character. The reason for that is that Herald of Agony gains an additional 1% attack speed per virulence if you can push it over 31. Uh, with the way the Herald of Agony works, and I've made other videos on it, it's a complicated skill, but uh, essentially you will generally have between 25 and 40 virulence most of the time, and so that gives your, your minion that is doing all of your damage, it gives that minion an extra 25 to 40% at increased attack speed, which is absolutely enormous. Uh, and so this node is mandatory if you're playing Herald of Agony, uh, and we'll see whether Herald of Agony work, uh, works out well with this Ascendancy or not. Uh, I think that Necromancer is one compelling choice, Pathfinder will remain a compelling choice, and we'll also see uh, people continuing to play it on the really tanky builds like Gladiator and Juggernaut as well. Uh, and maybe even Raider will continue to be useful with, uh, with Herald of Agony, but Necromancer will be a viable option and if you're going to be a necromancer using Herald of Agony, you are going to be taking this node, and it's going to be the reason that you are to, that you are playing it. So, on other note, uh, other things it does, 
Uh, plus two to gem levels improves golem buffs, but usually by not enough to matter. So if you're using your golems for their combat stats, then that's okay. If you're using them for uh, their buffs, then this isn't a very powerful node for you. Spectres are a little bit of an exception. Spectres don't gain much from this node. They don't really scale much above gem level 19. Uh, it's worthwhile, but it's far from uber, and you would do better with taking a different node instead. Your spectres can expect to gain about 2-4% more damage, 2-4% more life, and about 250 accuracy out of this node, which is okay, but nothing, as I say, nothing to write home about. Summon, Rage, Summon Raging Spirits gains a lot from this node, 21% uh, more damage or more, and also the Summon Raging Spirits will die a bit less because of it. So the too long d didn't listen part of this is that you should be taking this node. Uh, unless you're a Spectre Specialist, your Necromancer needs to take this node. Uh, there's no real question to it. Uh, it's going to be the best one on the tree, and it's par probably the reason you chose to be a Necromancer as well. As a quick side note, this also has the potential to open new options in future. Uh, for example, I could see a situation where the Elementalist Ascendancy might get plus two to gems that are one of fire, lightning, or cold, or conceivably get a selection where you can pick plus one, uh, plus one or plus two to fire gems down one tree, plus one or plus two to, to lightning gems down another, plus one or plus two to cold gems down another. So there's a lot of potential design space that this opens up in the future as well. Okay, next up we have, we've gone from the exciting to now the relatively mundane Essence Glutton. Uh, Essence Glutton will solve all of your mana issues if you're having them, uh, as long as you're willing to play around with corpse, uh, corpse creation and corpse eating shenanigans, and to time when you consume corpses carefully. I honestly think that there's, again, this is just too much of the please eat all of the delicious corpses except for that one, uh, which just don't work very well in the current state of Path of Exile, and so I'm going to suggest probably leave this one out of your builds unless you are, um, unless you're just more determined than I am to experiment with this mechanic. Last up we have Commander of Darkness, which is completely unchanged and is a very strong aura-focused node. So, auras from your skills grant 3% increased attack and cast speed to your allies. I'll come back to this later. Uh, because the straightforward part is you and allies affected by your auras from your skills get, deal 30% increased damage and have 20% increased elemental resistances. Now you can rely upon always having an aura on, so this means that you can go uh, 20, you can spend less on, uh, or sorry, you can invest less into gearing for resistances because you can rely upon always having this 20% uh, elemental resistances bonus. So that's really strong. Uh, that will free up, uh, freeing up 60% elemental resistances total on your gear uh, will basically save you one and a half uh, suffixes on jewelry, which you could then get different suffixes, more powerful ones that deal damage, or alternately, uh, at a lower gearing level, it's probably two entire suffixes, so then again, opens up more options, lets you pick gear uh, that adds more damage and doesn't have as much el elemental resistances on it. So, you can rely upon that, but the first line is the one that I want to focus on. Auras from your skills grant 3% increased attack and cast speed to you and allies. 3% is not much, but you can get a lot of auras. You can get a hell of a lot of auras if you build for them. And this is 3% from each of your auras. This is the centerpiece of, any, of the now quite out of favour, but historically, historically relevant uh, necromancer-based uh, aura characters that have built around uh, Commander of Darkness in the past. You can get a lot of increased attack speed that you're grinding out. The other thing is that this 3% is affected, by, uh, is affected by increased aura effect. So if you've got six auras, each one of your auras is giving this extra 3% attack speed. That's 18% base. If you can get 34% increased aura effectiveness on your passive tree, and then suddenly, it's each one of these six auras is now giving 4% increased attack speed uh, and cast speed, which is now 24%. That's huge. Uh, if you can get the aura effect up to 67%, which is much harder to do, uh, then you'll be gaining 5% increased attack and cast speed from each uh, to each of your allies that are affected by auras. 
allies include both other players and your undead minions. So both of them basically the same. I know, I know. Some of you think that um, some of you think that the undead have better AI, but um, they're both your allies. And so this is a potentially very powerful node if you're willing to go heavily all in on the on an auras theme. Auras do scale your undead very well as well. Uh, so there is certainly a lot of reward to doing so. Now, my default suggestion for a Necromancer, I think there, are, there have been some of the Ascendancy overhauls, like the Slayer, that have posed really, really difficult questions where there's been a lot of very compelling nodes. I feel there's five compelling nodes on, on the uh, Necromancer, and here's my suggestion. Deviate from this if you wish. Take Unnatural Strength and all of its prerequisites, uh, and do this as your cruel Ascendancy. Next, take Mistress of Sacrifice. Uh, this is just uh, this is just going to be a really powerful node. Uh, the all the skill effect duration and the offerings, and the ability to just basically use offering of flesh as a val haste, essentially as a val haste effect uh, that affects you as well, is really 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 good. Then in the Eternal Labyrinth, uh, take either Commander of Darkness or Bone Barrier. Uh, we're going to really need to play around with Bone Barrier to see just how good it is in practice. Uh, I think it looks pretty good, but we're going to have to see how it works. Uh, other, um, otherwise, of course, Commander of Darkness is strong. If you're going to be investing in using a lot of auras, then Commander of Darkness is, is going to be the best node on the entire tree. Uh, but you won't be at the point where you can do that until you're at the Eternal Labyrinth, uh, because when you're at the Eternal Labyrinth, chances are you're going to have... Uh, you're going to be at the point where you're starting to decrease your reservation costs on your auras considerably, which then allows you to run more of them. In any case, that's all I've got for the moment on the Necromancer. If you've got any questions, definitely fire away. Uh, I may not be able to answer much in the next 24 hours because I've got a bunch of social plans, uh, but after that I should be back and having a look at the new information that comes out. So if you've got any questions, fire away. Otherwise, hope you have a good one.